Good morning, everyone. I am here again with, uh, 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 we're doing the Sunday school lesson again. Um, I'm going to give you uh, what God had given me in reference to a bold faith. Um, the lesson is coming from Daniel, uh, the third chapter, uh, verses uh, 19 through 26 and uh, 20. Let's just say uh, Daniel 19 through 28. The entire book is actually, uh, but the entire chapter should be read. Is is actually really, really good. Today, we're talking about a very familiar passage of scripture where it talks about the three Hebrew boys. So we already know uh, who that is and what exactly uh, is going on uh, in the story. I just kind of wanted to point out a few things that God had shared with me uh, during that. Uh, give me just a little bit of base. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar built this big old gold thing, idol that he wanted everybody to worship. And and uh, he would, you know, play music and and uh, everybody bow down, of course. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh which is the three Hebrew boys is what we call them. And uh, they didn't bow because they served the one and only God, the true God, the one uh, and only God. And so that upset the king. And so it starts out in verse 19 where it talks about how the, the king was so angry. He was upset that people wouldn't worship. The, and the golden image, uh, according to some of the things that I have read, uh, was, you know, looked like him. So it was like an image of him. And so you basically, he kind of wanted people to pay homage to him. He was the king and he wanted this idol to be something that um, he left a legacy of his greatness. And so uh, he was upset. He was mad about the fact that people wouldn't worship this image. Um, and so uh, he had got so upset about it. What he did was he uh, heated the furnace seven times hotter than it normally is heated. And here's a, a little bit more uh, going back a little bit because I did forget to tell you why. Okay, once you didn't serve the image or you didn't bow down and worship the image that he had set forth, uh, the penalty was that you would be put into the fiery furnace. And so... Um, when they he didn't when they didn't bow, he was upset about it. And so, before this part, uh, before verse nineteen, before he really really gets upset, because even the the initial uh, them not bowing, you know, upset him. But he even gave them a second chance in front of everybody. And so he played the music, and they still didn't bow. So this is like the second time that they didn't worship uh, the image. And so. Uh, Pretty much, if you just think about it, he is just prideful. He is uh, prideful thinking that um, he's he's like, you know, this is, you know, they're not listening to me. They're not doing what I said do, you know. Um, and uh, so he his pride got in the way. And so he got upset about it. He was very angry about it. And so uh, basically... Basically, the reason why this is one of the most uh, famous passages of scriptures that we really talk about, because it talks about how having faith in God produces results. And so uh, let me say that again. So it talks about how the faith in God, our faith in God produces results. It's not just something that we talk about. It's not just something that we live. We have many examples in the scripture that tells us that if we believe in God and we trust God, that he is faithful and just to, to uh, answer our prayers. Sometimes the way he answers our prayers is maybe not the way we expect, but think about that. Our faith in God produces results. Now the results that he is producing is to make us better Christians, to make us better mothers and daughters and sisters and, and brothers and, and uh, to make us a better people so that we can help the world to continue on in the world that we live in. The world that we live in is so wicked and we, they need hope. We are the hope. We have the hope that they can make it another day. 
that they can make it uh, in this world of turmoil. And so let me get back uh, to the scripture. I went off on a little tangent. But um, so he, they heated up, heated up the furnace seven times hotter. And so they cast him in the furnace. I mean, he was so upset. They cast him in the furnace fully clothed with all of their uh, attire. When they would go to different events, they would put on, you know, the the best clothing and the, the best outfits. And so they were all totally um dressed and so he threw him in there bound him of course first because you know how can you uh the, there's a scripture in the bible that talks about how can you ravage a man's house and i'm paraphrasing uh, except you bind him first so he bought they bound him bound them and threw them in the fiery furnace now look at this here in verse uh i'm jumping down to verse uh 22 the people that bound him and threw him into the furnace were killed immediately because the fire was that hot. But they were actually being, they were able to be bound and thrown in the fire, not affected, but the people that threw them in the fire were affected. They were burnt up by the fire. They were killed immediately. So sometimes you have those haters or those people that are trying to steal your joy or trying to keep you uh in a, at a particular level or a certain level but realize this when the fire gets really really hot when the fire is seven times hotter than it's supposed to be somebody's going to get burned but it's not going to be you if you're following and trusting in the most high god then you don't have to worry about it all you have to do is pray for them and a lot of times and i'm getting off on a tangent this is like i said what god gave me Sometimes you begin to feel sorry for people that attack you because you know that if you give it in God's hands, that they are going to be in trouble. You know, God takes care of his people. You know how when you was, you might not did this, but let me tell you about when we was young, me and my cousins, we would get together. If, if one person was for to get into, we were for the all fight. We took care of our family. That was important to us. We were in, we uh, took care of our family. Uh, we had their back. God has our back just like that, even better than that. Because a lot of times we had to scrap and battle and scra come out scraped up and different things of that nature. But when God got your back, you ain't even got to lift a finger. So the boys were thrown into the fiery furnace and those that threw them in were killed immediately. And in verse 23 is uh, they were able, you know, they went in there bound in the midst of the fire. Um, and then uh, in verse 24, okay, here is where God is beginning to put his, you know, put his uh, stamp of approval or his finger upon it, that they wouldn't worship other gods. Now, I could go back into the story where, you know, God, they had already been tested prior when it came to the eating and all of that. But we're not going to talk about that, but. So the king gets up. Now, the king looks over there and he says, did we not throw three people in there? And then he says, they said, yeah, we threw three people in there bound. He said that there are, he said that there are three people in there, four people in there walking around. And the fourth man looks like the son of God. Wow. The revelation was so powerful that even the, the man that didn't even believe in God, believed God then. Think about this. If somebody is thrown in a fiery furnace and they walking around and chilling and talking. I mean, think about this. If what would you do if you was thrown in the fiery furnace and you were loose? Would you not try to come out? But they had God there. So they were conversating and asking God questions, I'm sure, and, and fellowshipping with him and, and conversing about the word and conversing about the situation. And, and I believe even this, that they were being comforted that, that you know, I'm not going to say they were being prayed. Yeah, they may have been even being praised for the type of faith that they had displayed in this situation, that they didn't compromise, that they were still able to stand in the midst of this horrifying thing that was getting ready to happen. You know that uh, they knew Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They knew what were the consequences of them not obeying the king. And so they still was able to do it because they trusted God uh, even the more. And uh, the verses that we uh, are talking about today, it doesn't talk about how, you know, there's a precursor to him, them being thrown into the furnace. He told, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, Abednego told him, okay, I missed two things. Let me go back. One, the king said, who is able to deliver you from my hand? And so 
part of that is in this leaming in this verse, uh, in these verses that we're talking about. And then the other part, he said, we won't worship. Uh, they said, the three Hebrew boys said, they won't worship another God. That uh, we should serve God. We trust and even if he, and, and we, I'm paraphrasing, even if he don't deliver us, we still not going to do it. You know, but they knew that God was with them and God was going to deliver them, them from that. And so in verse 26, uh, then, you know, after being astonished and saying that there's the son of man, how did the man know he was the son of man? Wow. I mean, that is just amazing how God gave him that revelation in the midst of it all. I need to hurry up a little bit here. Um, and so he called out to him and told him to come out. When they came out, they didn't have no smoke inhalations. They didn't have any smoke on their clothes. The fire had no power. The fire had no power over them. That is how it is when you're in the faith. When God, when God truly delivers you from something, there's no power over it. You have, there's no power left in it. When he delivers you, I'm not saying that the enemy's not going to attack you or try to make you go back or disbelieve what God had done for you, but there is no power in it. All you have to do is just walk in the faith. And so in, in verse, this was such a powerful faith and bold faith that they had went through that it encouraged King Nebuchadnezzar, who did not believe in God. He said, blessed is your God. That sent an angel. So now it's an angel instead of the son of God. But we're not going to talk about that. To deliver you. Because they trusted in him. He delivered them because they trusted in him. They believed that he would do it. That's Sometimes we don't believe. We have to believe. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. You got to believe. Even though sometimes we might not see it. Even though sometimes it seems like there's one footprint in the sand. We still got to trust that God is in the midst. And God is working things out. God is not giving us a bed of roses. I mean, if, if, even if he gives us a bed of roses. Let's think about that. Roses are beautiful, but they have thorns. So even if he does give us a bed of roses, there are thorns there in the bed of roses. Okay, let's move on. The king even says, "You fr they frustrated the word of the king. In other words, you showed me up. You know, you just you just made me look bad. You know, I said all of this was going to happen. You know, um, and then you just, you your God just showed me up. And, you know, so even though he uh, was, he talked about how it was, how he was frustrated. So then he says that you had decided that you wasn't going to serve or worship no other God. And he delivered you except for your own God. And he delivered you. And so in these scriptures, we talk about the bold faith of God, you know, being that you are led of God, not compromising the faith of God. And it is not always easy. Think about this. They still were thrown in the fiery furnace for believing God, but God delivered them out of the fiery furnace. So this week, just try to remember, you know what? Don't compromise your faith. Don't compromise who you are because you'll regret it later on in life. There's many times that there's things that I have said or done, and then I, I think about it later on and I'll be like, wow, why did I do that? Why was I so concerned about what others thought and I didn't even think about what God thought about what I was doing and so remember God because he always remembers you so remember to have that bold faith this week um sorry the lesson took I mean it took so long to get out the lesson I had a mini vacay so um I'll try to make sure that I try to get it out a little earlier before y'all go to Sunday school so you can have something that you can talk about while you're in there all right and God bless you you have a great week